What is going on JK fam? Johnny here and today I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to take your Northern Lights image from this to this. Like I said, it's going to be a quick tutorial. I'm going to try to do it in under 5 minutes. So if I talk too fast, feel free to rewatch the video or slow it down. So for starters, I use Lightroom. This is my program I use. It has basic corrections, tone curve, HSL, and then I'm going to use a little bit of a mask later on. If you have a different program and it has these three settings, you should be able to follow along. So for starters, this image is shot in RAW. Essentially what that means is it's an image that has as much information taken into it so that I can edit it and post later. If you don't know how to shoot Northern Lights photos, go ahead and check the description. I will link my previous video and that shows you how to take images of the Northern Lights with either a DSLR, mirrorless, or even your phone. Yes, your phone. So if you don't know how and you wanna learn how, go ahead and check out that video below. So now we're gonna start. For starters, I'm gonna hit the basic correction. This up here is the white balance. It has your temperature and tint. I already did my white balance when I was on scene. So if you haven't done that, go ahead and adjust it in post. In order to mitigate that in the future, I use a white balance card. You guys can try to use it too. Essentially, it's a little white card. It's true white. You take a picture of it when you hit manual white balance when you're on scene and you don't have to adjust anything in post in terms of white balance. If you want the access to the card, go ahead and check the description down below. I'll put a link to it as well. Now that we're done with white balance, we're gonna move on to tone. So with this image, ideally, as you saw from the after photo, I want to darken a lot of this and make it almost like a silhouette image. That way we can just focus on the lights here, here, and then here. In order to do that, I'm going to increase the contrast. I'm gonna bump this bad boy a lot. Now I know it looks like I took away a lot of the haze up here. However, the effect I wanted was to darken these trees down here. And there's a little bit of like garbage or I'm not sure what that is over there but I don't want that in the image. Now we're going to increase the highlights. We're gonna bump this up pretty good. We're gonna bump it up to around 70. All right, shadows we're going to actually bring down. I'm gonna say probably around 70 as well. 75 looks really good. I know it's kind of looking a little washed out, but we'll fix that later. Whites, we're gonna keep the same. I think whites are fairly good right now. And then blacks, we're just gonna bring up a little bit. I know what you're wondering, you're like, hey, why you bring up the blacks when you just bump the contrast up in order to darken it? I want to bring back a little, little bit of information back into the image. If you see the histogram up here, everything is so shifted left that I want to increase some of the blacks just so you see a little bit of a difference. Now that we're done with the tones, we're going to move on to presence. So we want to increase texture and clarity. We don't want to bump it up so high to where it makes the image look fake. We want to make subtle corrections to this image to make it look a little bit better as we go. We'll bump these up to around 30, actually. We'll add a little bit more texture to it. A little bit more. Awesome. And then we're going to actually dehaze the image to the left. So we're actually going to add haze to it, essentially. Normally, you want to dehaze an image to make it look a little less foggy or whatever. With the Northern Lights, I actually like that hazy look to it. So we're actually going to decrease the haze to add a bit more. And that looks really, really good to me. All the haze I was taking away from the contrast, we've brought back up and we've allowed these trees over here to get a lot darker. Now that we're messing with the lights over here as well as here, we're going to increase the vibrance and saturation. You don't want to overdo this just like with anything else. You want to make subtle shifts. So we'll go to around 20 and I'm very content with how that looks. We'll adjust more of the saturation later. Now that we're done with the basic slider, we're going to go down to tone curve. I'm going to make subtle shifts here. I know some people like to make a lot more. I'm just going to mess with it just a tiny little bit. I feel like I've done a lot with the sliders already. We're just going to fine tune this image. And that to me looks really good. Slight, slight curves into this, but for me, that's more than good enough. And then finally, we're going to move on to HSL. So if you don't know what HSL is, it's hue, saturation, and luminance. This allows you to adjust individual colors. So up here, like I said, we're adjusting saturation. That's for the entire image. And then down here in the HSL, we actually get to pinpoint what colors we want to adjust. So for starters, we're going to make the orange a little bit more yellow. Let's bump it up to around, around there. That looks really good to me. We're going to address the yellow and we're going to bump that over more towards the green. We'll go around 60s. And then finally, we're going to make the green look a little bit darker. So we'll put around 22. That already looks a lot better. To make it look even better, we're going to adjust the saturation of the yellow as well as the green cider. So let's bump the yellow up to around 30, 36. And then we're going to bump the green to around, we'll go around 86. Awesome. I think that looks really good and you could finish your image right here. But the one last thing I want to do is create a filter around here. Like I told you guys before, filter mask, and then we'll make a, we'll make it a little bit oval. 
just to cover those lights right there. From here, you want to invert your image. And then, let's see, automatically brought down the shadow, so we'll undo that. We're going to drop the exposure to kill the lights. We're going to drop the highlights. And then finally, we're going to drop the whites. And then we're going to bring the feathering up so you don't see an obvious oval. And that looks really good to me. I feel like that made all the difference, and my photo is now edited. So that's about it, guys, for me. Like I said, I took this video and made it really really fast but as you can see it's a matter of five minutes or less in order for you to adjust your photo it would have been even less if i didn't adjust that little filter at the end but i'm a little bit of a perfectionist and i feel like this photo turned out really well so some points to take from this video for starters like i said you want to shoot in raw go into your camera settings your phone settings and make sure your image is shot in raw not jpeg the reason being is you won't be able to do all these fine shots if you shoot it in jpeg Second of all, white balance. It's not the most crucial thing, but it saves you time in post if it's already set for you like mine was. Another thing to take note of is composition. So yes, there was a little bit of stuff right here that I, I didn't really know what it was, but it was kind of detracting from the image. Yes, you can fix it if you're going, you know, for like this silhouetting shot of the trees and stuff. But as you can see, there's not too much stuff in the foreground that takes away from the lights. There was this out here and luckily I was able to darken it in order to take away the look from up here. But just keep that in mind, take time on the shoot in order to actually get a good shot of the northern lights and then adjust it accordingly. I like for example, I made these a lot more yellow because I didn't like the reddish look to it. That's just my preference. And you can play with it accordingly to what yours is. Like I said, HSL is a very powerful tool. Something to note here is that this is how I edited my image. My image up here, as you can see in the top right, it says ISO 400. I shot this on a 16 millimeter focal length. That is not a crop sensor, that's full frame at f2.8 and a 20 second shutter. That was given my circumstances at my current location. So if you have a different shot, you know, your settings are gonna be different. If your image is shot like that, but it looks, you know, exposure is different, you're not gonna adjust these numbers exactly like how I did. So the reason for this video is so you can see my workflow and take from it what you feel is necessary for your photo this isn't the only way to edit northern lights photos this is my workflow i hope you can understand why i did some of the adjustments i did and if you learned something useful please leave this video a like and like i said if i talk way too fast go ahead and replay the video and if you still don't understand something go ahead and leave it down in the comments below and i will answer your questions thank you guys for watching and i hope to see you in the next one see ya